Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. If you want to do a podcast, you can. All you need is your phone and Spotify for podcasters. It is so simple. Anyone who listens to me knows that I am technically challenged. So all you need to do is just download the app It's free and get your voice on out there. People need to hear what you want to bring to the world. Spotify for podcasters. Check it out. I don't know about you, but when I think of Jesus, I think of this loving, merciful, kind, gentle soul, gentle man, gentle God. But I know that there will be judgment day with him. And I don't really think about that that much. And I think we should, because if we keep our salvation in the front of our mind, in our day, and realize that the things that we think, the things that we say, and the things that we do, or don't think, don't say, don't do, are being recorded. We're going to have to look at Jesus in the face. And this was what slapped me in mind today in the readings. It's Luke 21, 36. It's the Alleluia, small little verse right before the gospel. Be vigilant at all time and pray that you may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. That I need strength to stand before the Son of Man. And by the way, vigilant. Let's look that puppy up. On the alert. As for danger or error, you're being watchful. You're being careful. Attentive to discover and avoid danger or to provide safety. Being watchful, wakeful, circumspect. Especially for danger or disorder, being watchful. What do you think that really means, everyone? Being vigilant and praying at all times that we may have the strength to stand before the Son of Man. But it's also, honestly, saying, wake up. Pay attention to your day. Do not go through this day like another day where you don't pay attention, you're not in your conscious mind, you're allowing yourself to be ruled by emotions, ruled by thoughts and memories, and you're slowly killing yourself. If we sat more in peace and put ourselves on that day of judgment, in that day of judgment, I should say, I had really sad, fearful feelings flowing through my body as I sat and actually put myself in what I would imagine standing before the Son of Man would be like. Like, would I be sitting there with other people? Would I just be in face-to-face with him? Nobody else is around. How embarrassed, how shameful, how sad I would be. Because I know that for me, I would look at all the negative things that I have done in my life. And I know Judgment Day is the day where 
God isn't so merciful. It's time to pay the Pied Piper of all the things that, again, we did or did not do. So today, let's think about that. Because we don't know the day or the hour. We have no idea when God's going to take us off of this earth. And we have no idea when that face-to-face moment will come. So we have to be vigilant. Be aware. Pay attention. And pray. God's not just saying, keep your eyes open. Keep praying. Pray for you, your family. Pray for the country that you're in. Pray for all of those and their salvation. But mostly, pray for yourself. Pray for the strength to be able to stand in front of Jesus. Maybe as we float into this holiday weekend, here in America, we're celebrating Labor Day. So typically non-retail types of stores, companies are closed. It's a long weekend for many. And it's a time where we can go off the rails. It could be considered the last summer party. But maybe, just maybe, if we put ourselves in the position of standing before God on the day of judgment, we may choose not to be that glutton, not to overindulge in food, drink, drugs, to be that witness, to be that mirror neuron that other people look at and say, I don't know what it is about you, but I want it. To show that self-control, to show how important it is for you to live differently than the people in this world, because one day you and everybody else are going to have to look at Jesus in the face and make an account for your life. I've said this before, to keep your salvation in your purview today, keep it in the front of your face, keep it around you, keep it as something that you grab onto today. The reason I am choosing not to do this, not to say this, or restraining in some evil deed You can do it because of that face-to-face judgment. And you can also do it with the picture that I have, which is the beaten, bloody Jesus hanging on the cross, where I can look at him and say, okay, I don't want to add any more bruises or blood or wounds to you, Jesus, because... That's basically what he did. He took on all the sins, past, present, and future. And you and I are adding to that abuse. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, come Holy Spirit. Help every single one of us to remember that we have to see Jesus face to face in judgment. So let's remind ourselves to take advantage of his mercy now, to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet as often as we can, to take advantage of the Sacrament of Reconciliation, to reconcile ourselves to God, especially as fast as we can if we are in mortal sin. If we are in venial sin, still, Lord, put in our heart to run to reconciliation so that we are as clean and pure as we possibly can be at this very moment. Put in our hearts the desire to purify them as often as we can in that beautiful sacrament so that we go often, and we cleanse our souls so that we are prepared, getting even more prepared for the day that we 
will be judged. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know. Sit with that event. I'm telling you, I had feelings of not so good. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know if I could stand in front of him. I think I would just fall right on my face, like not even able to look at him. I was even feeling like kind of my chin starting to quiver. You know, when you first start kind of feeling like you're going to cry. I mean, how does one look at a God that's so loving, that did so much for us, but all we did was slap him in the face with our life? I mean, I know I've been forgiven for the things that I've done in the past, but it's still in my book. Everything is recorded in my book. And I just pray at the end of it all that my name is in the book of life and that I don't get wrapped up and thrown into the lake of fire. I don't like to look at God and be afraid of him, but darn it, we really should be. <laughs> Fear of the Lord is not to be afraid of hell. The real gift of the fear of the Lord is to not want to disappoint him. We're afraid deep down because he is God and the wrath of God can be horrific and intense. I don't even know the words to say. <laughs> really, the wrath of God is beyond words. And one could seriously be afraid of him. And I am, I am afraid of hell, but I'm more afraid of disappointing God and that judgment moment where I have to look at him and he has to look at me. What is that going to be like? Okay, so that's what I want you to sit with. And that's what I want you to remind yourself of all weekend long, because if we're not vigilant, meaning if we're not stinking, opening our eyes, looking around, paying attention, being present we're just going to do things automatically through our subconscious programs. We're just going to be who we are going to be, which is who we are right at this moment, and not humble ourselves and ask God in to sanctify us, to transform us, to change us just in today. <sighs> okay. Sit with that event. Pay attention to how your body feels. Pay attention to what thoughts come into your mind. Pay attention to what you would do. Just put yourself in that event. And then try to remember throughout the rest of your weekend until I talk to you on Monday. And yes, I will talk to you on Monday. What you're going to do. That every single choice of your thought, your word, your deed, how are you going to hopefully make your choices in this day align with God's will? Being virtuous, being righteous, walking the narrow path. Okay, everyone, find something more with God, soul, mind, and body. It is an amazing journey. Stay tuned to the videos this weekend on YouTube. I think I'm going to start. I don't even know why I'm doing this. See, this is why sometimes I'm just questioning myself. I'm writing the Soul, Mind, and Body book so that it's something that people, you know, can have and reference and use. At the same time, I'm going to do the discernment of spirit so that we go over St. Ignatius 14 rules and we can understand what is going on when we hear voices, when we have thoughts in our heads, when we're prompted to do something. And at the same time, I will be traveling and speaking and doing the consecration to Jesus through Mary starting September 4th. 
I am sometimes my own worst enemy where I do this to myself, but it is what it is. So get on my YouTube channel and, uh, the first will be tomorrow. It's not, we're not going to probably get into the, well, maybe we'll get into the first rule, but we have to talk about prayer. You don't get to discern spirits without having a prayer life. It doesn't work that way. So a lot of you are going to have to hear the tough words that I'm going to say to get you back into a relationship with God. Because if that's not there, you cannot discern spirits. Okay. Have an awesome day. Put yourself in this event. Feel it, live it, breathe it, and remember it. And have a blessed and inspired day.